Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at Simple Rockets 2 and experimenting a little bit like kind of our knockoff, a sort of Gemini, sort of like we were doing with Atlas, which I know I called it Jupiter like a thousand times. I get it, it's, it's not Jupiter, it's Atlas. I knew that. <laughs> Jupiter is actually a missile in much, much earlier days of the army, and it's much, much later days is basically the predecessor to the SLS. So anyway, let's go ahead and uh, get started. So first things first, um, we're going to have to build ourselves a Gemini capsule here. I'm going to go ahead and pop off this little, I'm just going to call this imaginary upper stage here, and we're going to grab it. So the Gemini capsule, as everybody knows, uh, could fit two people as opposed to one. So I'm going to go ahead and crank this thing up just a little bit bigger, bringing it up to a 1.5 meters, which is going to be a pretty good size for us. We're going to go actually add real astronauts. Uh, last time I did this, I added a real crash dummy, and uh, somebody called them Jebediah. I know the reference. One astronaut, two astronauts. Cool. So, of course, we're going to name this thing uh, as fast as we can here. Let's come in here. Space capsule. New, new, new. That is not the name of that. This is the Gus Mobile. <laughs> Anybody who knows their references will know that. Unfortunately, our Gust Mobile is a little bit too heavy compared to the real Gust Mobile. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to go ahead and reduce my mass by about 50%. I know that's a little aggressive, but I need to get this thing a little bit more reasonable for us. Okay, so the Gemini capsule itself had a, basically a million different systems on board. You had a little thing on the front, which you could go ahead and uh, use to actually propel this thing around. It's called OAMs, for those of you guys who are curious. It had complete RCS systems on board. It had a pretty good battery and fuel cells, complete reentry. It was a slick system. System. So what I would do first is I'm going to go ahead and get myself a fuel tank and put, pop that on the nose there. So um, yeah, we don't need that much. I'm going to shrink this down a little bit and back it up. Again, I'm just going by eyeball here. I'm not trying to impress anybody with my ability to model these things perfectly here. I'm actually going to shrink it just a teeny tiny bit to kind of get that little kind of crunched nose effect that everybody thinks of. Um, this is going to be for the purposes of carrying us some monopropellant. I don't want kerosene. I want monoprop. Let's go ahead and pop this over to mono. And that's going to do it, hydrazine. So again, this is going to be for my RCS system. On the back here, we're going to go ahead and throw in everybody's favorite heat shield. Again, we're just trying to keep this kind of simple. There's my heat shield. Going to stretch it out so it actually covers the entire back. We're actually going to get some real velocity with this thing. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get myself an interstage. We don't need a very large interstage here because, again, we're just going to break this off. Now, the real Gemini capsule, of course, had this kind of little, like, coniness to it, like kind of that sort of thing. Like, it got a little bit bigger, so I'm just going to kind of simulate that effect here. Again, this basically would conceal the back part. Next, we're going to need our re-entry rockets. But uh, before I do that, I'm actually going to go ahead and get a little power section is what I'm going to call it here. So I'm going to keep it about 25. That's going to be plenty big enough for us. We're going to go ahead and fill this up with battery as opposed to uh, some of the other options that we have here. Okay, so now we have our little battery section. Again, we're trying to keep that like fake little cone thing going. So I'm just going to kind of do one of those. It's going to be a little chunky, but I'm fine with that. All right, let's go ahead and get our re-entry fuel tank now too. And we're not going to need a lot. We're going to need, let's do about 0.5. All right, so now we're going to put our re-entry engine. We do not need a strong engine for the purposes of re-entering here. As a matter of fact, I think that's probably too big. So let me just memorize real quickly, make sure this makes sense. All right, looks good to me. Let's go ahead and design our re-entry rocket here. So uh, first things first, we're not going to be opting. We're going to be using a solid rocket here. Ooh, that sounds like fun. Nuclear thermal, solid. Uh, let's see here. How much delta? Oh my god, we don't need that much delta V. We only need about, uh, I think it was 540 or something like that. It really doesn't take much. So let's shrink this thing down a little bit. Let's pick ourselves something that gets us really good gas mileage. I saw AP APCP is going to get us 273. Let's go ahead and modify our nozzle here so that it's uh, going to be, again, better gas mileage so I can shrink the fuel tank. And we're going to go ahead. Oh my. Uh oh. Okay, that's, that's definitely going to get us better gas mileage. All right, so 296. There we go. Yeah. Now that is awesome. Unfortunately, it is also gigantic. So um, we don't need anything like that. That's going to give us 1282 meters a second, which is pretty cool, but it's uh, it's a little too much. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink this thing down a little bit. Boo, whoop. Again, we're just pretending that this whole backside is this. I'm going to leave its mass the same, though, just to be kind of fair. Remember, the original Gemini had this little kind of power pack on the back. Now, I could sit here and systematically place each bit of the power pack in here if I wanted, but I'm just going to kind of keep it simple today. So I'm going to go ahead and design that little thing on the back, kind of like that. Unfortunately, my fuel tank is gigantic. We don't need anything that big. We just need a little bit less. So I'm going to shrink this down to, we'll do 0.2. Stick it back on there. Again, we need about, oh, perfect. So <laughs> there is our capsule. Uh, not a lot to it. Again, uh, this way is actually up, if you want to imagine it. Let's go ahead and get ourselves some RCS. So now if we wanted to do this properly, well, when we do RCS, we do it with this style nozzle. We actually stick something like this. We put one of those right there. Then, of course, we'd uh, do the radial feature and kind of go all the way around. Uh, what some people will do is they'll use this style RCS, which kind of gives you that ability to kind of aim the RCS. But we're going to be a little bit more old school here today, which 
And I'm probably going to eat it in a little while when this happens to me. All right, it looks pretty good to me. Let's go ahead and put another set of RCS nozzles. Whoop! I don't need one of those anymore. And we'll snap it. Uh, I want to put it right. See, I'd love to put it on the interstage itself, but it's not going to work. I'm going to put it right there. We're going to go ahead and radial these as well. And now we need to put some weirdly placed RCS nozzles. I'm actually going to have to put a few of them basically in the back so that we can get that kind of OMS sort of technology. Now, the interesting technique here, and I've seen a lot of people uh, really, really successful with this, is to actually put it here, which seems a little weird, and then rotate it into place. But unfortunately, I'm a bit too lazy for something like that. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball this. Again, it's not going to be pretty. It's just going to work. And remember, the original OMS also was not exactly what I considered to be pretty or perfect. Delightful. Yeah, you're looking at that going, uh, you gotta be kidding me. Uh, that looks good to me. Of course, we could go into absolute perfection mode here. You know, I could click on this thing and I could very carefully manipulate it. Uh, let's see here. If I manipulate the X position, let's do 0 0.75. We come over here in 0 0.75. We could come over here. We could set minus 0 0.75, 0 0.75. Okay, now I've made everybody at home who's worried about perfection not have to worry about it so much. Okay, we're then going to go ahead and pop back over the front. We're going to throw ourselves a mini parachute here, but we're actually going to adjust the size of the parachute. I want something a little bit bigger. That looks good. And we're going to throw up those last two pieces of my ohms. Put one in there, and of course, going to throw the other one on the other side right here. And yes, we'll go ahead and clean it up so it's not as goofy. Uh, let's see here. We're dealing with a zero on the Z position here, and we're going to do minus 0 0.5. Oh, a little bit too much. Let's try zero, minus 0 0.55. Hey, I like that. Let's grab our buddy over here. We're going to set this one to 0 0.5. Oh, 5.5, 5, we said, yeah. 5.5, 5. there we go. 0, 0.0. Boop, boop, boop. Enter. Hey, we did it. And now we have our uh, knockoff <laughs> Gemini capsule, which um, I really don't want to be riding in, to be honest. But hey, you gotta, somebody's got to try it. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do, of course, uh, now that we got this thing done, is uh, we're just going to kind of decorate just a little tiny bit here. Uh, it looks pretty good. I kind of want like kind of, can we get like a dark, ooh, look at this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. Let's go to the trim level. Whoa, I goofed up already. Let's go to the trim here. And um, I want to like a gray. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that. It looks like something that would be, uh, you know, I think there's a couple of Imperial TIE fighter pilots would be flying one of those around. But hey, I'm happy with it. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. I'm, I'm kind of happy. I think our little Gemini capsule here is actually pretty good looking. Because uh, I'm uh, not a silly guy, I'm going to go up here and hit create subassembly. A Gemini... Gemini crickets. <laughs> nice. Okay, now we got to get this darn thing into space somehow. So the original Gemini missions were uh, propelled into space. I did it right this time by Titan, which was actually like an ICBM, which is, in my mind, a little crazy that they try something like that. But hey, it worked pretty well. So the Titan missile itself is a two-stager. You know, you have kind of like a little upper stage up at the top bit, which had, I think it was uh, like an LR-91 or something like that that would power it. So let's do the top stage first. So, woo, get out of here. We don't need you yet. So let's go ahead and grab myself my handy dandy interstage. Uh, it doesn't need to be terribly big. That looks pretty good. I'm actually going to stripe my interstage so that I know it's an interstage. There we go. Of course, we can do the Soyuz style, which I love with such a passion, but we're not going to do that today. And then we're going to go ahead and slap this thing on the back of it. Okay, so we're going to have to go ahead and uh, get this thing going. I believe it had something like, uh, it's like a three-minute burn time or a two-minute burn time. It's something I should probably look up rather than just kind of halfing it, but uh, we're going to try anyway. So this gives us, uh, let's see, 3317 meters a second. We're going to need a total of 5,700 meters per second. Our uh, stage two, of course, remember, that's the reentry stage. So that's actually not bad. Like, um, that's actually really close to what I needed. <laughs> but um, we'll knock this down to about 2,000, and we'll use the lower part. Now, one of my favorite parts about these early engines is that instead of using, you know, nice and clean propellants, uh, they use crazy things like aerozyne and uh, nitrous oxide and stuff like that, which were super dangerous. So you know we got to do that too, right? So let's go ahead and get ourselves some, uh, ooh, uh, we'll do some N2O and we'll go old school, aerozine. Uh, one of the things I really cracked up about, if you click here, it actually says it was never used in commercial rockets. I love that. So what a great detail. Okay, so I'm looking at the back here. Um, we're probably going to go with the yeah, gas generator is not a bad cycle. But again, that's going to get me not the world's most thrust, not that we're going to need it. I still think we're a little bit on the big side. Let me go ahead and optimize this for a high altitude. Because again, we don't need to uh, worry about that. Of course, if I optimize for high altitude, look what happens to everything else. Let's switch this over to a bell configuration so we can get just a little bit more fuel economy out of it. But unfortunately, you know, my thrust to weight ratio has uh, died a terrible and slow, painful death here. 
So there's two things I can do. Uh, first thing, I can, of course, increase the size. I can make this thing like bronc, like that. So um, that will certainly get me going, and it'll give me more than enough thrust to weight ratio to almost get this thing into orbit, believe it or not. Or what we could do is we could reduce the amount of fuel, because remember, we only need about 2,000 meters a second on this thing. I'm going to knock this down to, it's going to be like three and a quarter, I think. Let's put that back on there. Yeah, I said 2,000, didn't I? All right. Put you on there, too. Yeah, pretty close, pretty close. All right. That's the sound it should make. Hey, there we go. 2,100 meters a second. Okay, that's not bad. That will be more than enough thrust. But take a look at my thrust to weight ratio. I'm still just a teeny tiny bit shy here. So I'm going to go back this up again. You want about one and a half in uh, orbit. You don't really need that much. So I'm actually going to go ahead and use 90%. We're getting decent fuel economy, decent thrust. Everything's looking solid. Um, again, this is going to be my upper stage. Okay, let's go ahead and slap on. Remember, this is our knockoff version here. Pop down on the bottom. Now we need the business stage. <laughs> the business stage on, of course, the Titan rocket was monster. And this, this thing had a really, really, really long length to it. And a tremendously powerful dual nozzle rocket at the bottom. So, of course, because uh, we're hosers, we're going to do the exact same thing. Now, let me give you a cool little trick here. Uh, this is, I always like this one. So what you can do is uh, when you're building stuff like this, I'm gonna go ahead and grab myself a little block. It's gonna seem a little weird, but I'm actually going, ah, sometimes you gotta kind of adjust your camera here. I'm gonna put a block on the side. You're probably wondering why I'm doing that. The reason for that is I wanna be able to go ahead and do symmetry with this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to do radial symmetry. Anybody who's at home, of course, is looking at this going, I think I know exactly what you're doing here. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm doing. Is what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach the world's teeny tiniest little strut to this thing so that it can go ahead and actually connect this so that it can have a nice and even rocket flow. Before I do that, though, I'm going to go ahead and flip over here, close down the thinker panel. I'm going to make sure the fuel line is turned on. You need to make sure this thing lets fuel come through it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get myself a strut. And I'm going to stick it on the side of it. Whoa. This is one of the things I hate about struts is trying to get just the right... Ah, yep, this will uh, make you absolutely insane as well when you try to do it the first 50 times. Of course, I could stick the strut in the middle like that, but if you do something like that, you're going to have to fight this in the other direction instead. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. Ah, sometimes you, ah, there it goes. Good. Sweet. Okay. Stick out of the world so you can, of course, stick the strut out the side, but to do that, I'm going to get myself another one of these. I need a side strut. Hey, there we go. Shrink this like this a little bit. I'm going to put it right about there. Make sure they have fuel lines, by the way. If they don't have fuel lines, you don't got fuel. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and stick another one of these goofy things like this. And that is where my rockets are going to pop out. Ta-da! <laughs> it's not the most uh, fancy design I've ever designed, but hey, it actually works really, really well. Go ahead and make sure fuel line is turned on again. Again, we need a nice path from here to get basically through. And now when I stick my rockets on the bottom, I'm going to have the ability to actually customize these rockets together rather than independent of each other. Now, that is going to be awesome for me because it's going to eliminate a lot of that kind of nastiness that usually comes with this kind of process. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this all set up now. So um, these are my little tiny knockoffs. I'm actually going to have to optimize them for a little bit lower altitude. The original Titan, by the way, yes, it only had uh, two nozzles, but it was actually one engine. And of course, if I want to be a little bit more careful because I'm looking at those kind of hanging out on the side, you might want to reduce the drag scale of the kind of pieces that are hanging out. Otherwise, it's going to have a big impact on your performance on the way up. Okay, let's go ahead and get our engine skin here. So first of all, these things ran again on Aerozine and N2O. So I'm going to go ahead and get myself some Aerozine and N2O. And we are looking good right there. Delightful. So now we can actually start designing this. We have to actually tell this thing, yeah, it already preloaded. Delightful. All right, that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. And what do we have? So our stage one looks good. Stage three looks pretty good. Stage five, I can see all my stages are getting goofed up, which means if you come in here, I'm sure we're going to find out why everybody is getting goofed up. That happens a lot. Ah, see how it's firing that engine instead of that engine? Okay, so we're going to fire these two engines together first. We're going to enter stage. We're going to fire that engine. Let's go ahead and flip on Delta V mode here. Interesting. You'll notice that my Delta V has dropped. And the reason for that, by the way, is because of this. So don't panic. Okay, so let's see here. 1447, 2.1 minutes. Looks pretty good. My little engine at the top looks pretty good. My big old mages, uh, we don't have the thrust to weight ratio to get to space yet. And nor do we have the Delta V. So let's go ahead and click on my little engine here. We have a couple different styles we could use. I'm a huge fan of the gas generator cycle. There's actually a gas generator two cycle if I want to go ahead and be a little more irritating here, but that actually works better for me. So let's go ahead and pick a cool looking nozzle here. Uh, cone is pretty old school. I believe these use kind of that Delta shape, that modified one. And let's optimize this for low altitude. Plenty of throttle note, and we're just kind of have to kind of come in here and play with this a little bit until we, uh, let's see, we need it to be. Trying to get the maximum thrust to weight ratio without hurting our fuel economy here. 
Uh, I think I hurt my fuel economy. And right there, delightful. So uh, let's just head to 50 and round up. So we got a pretty good nozzle throat, pretty good nozzle length, and uh, everything's looking pretty good so far. The only thing we got to do now is play with my size here. We're going to go all the way up to get a 1.5 to 1 as far as my thrust to weight goes, which is standard. And that's going to get us about 3,600 meters per second. 3,600 plus the 5, 000, 2,000 at the top is going to be, we're going to be a little teeny bit short here. So we're going to need to increase our overall length just a little bit. Of course, we'll go up to 15 and a quarter meters. We can go have these two pieces and pull them down a little bit and let go. And notice everything kind of came down with it, which is just awesome. All right, this kind of gets 3,600 meters per second. I'm actually liking that. I think this is coming together. I've got a good feeling about this today. All right, let's go ahead and grab ourselves uh, some aerodynamic components here just to help things out. Go ahead and throw some little teeny tiny fins. Uh, they're not going to do much here, but you never know. Kind of do one of these, go ahead and do one of those. Again, we don't need a lot of fin here because we're not going to be chilling in the atmosphere that long. Go ahead and grab this, I'm pull that all the way to there, and check it out. So now we have our Titansky. <laughs> I don't think it's going to go so well. I think it's a little small, but um, again, we'll find out exactly what happens. Last but not least, I'm going to go ahead and throw in some nozzles for RCS at the very, very bottom, set them to be uh, radialed. I'm going to look this thing over really carefully. It's, it's, it's certainly not what I consider to be the Titan, but I'm not complaining too much. That's my inner stage there. We want to go ahead and stripe that sucker up, just so, again, so we can remind ourselves that's an inner stage. All right, striped. Hey, look at that. It's so cute. How much do we weigh? 104,000. That's like nothing. Okay, let's go ahead and memorize everything real quick. We have plenty of delta V at low altitude here. As we climb, our delta V shoots up, which is going to be plenty. That's over 5,000. That looks pretty good. I mean, if we come a little bit short, we come a little bit short. Stuff happens. Total delta V at low altitude is 5,100. High altitude is 6,500. So that's going to be, if I pick the middle here, yeah, that should be enough delta V. But everybody's looking at me with raised eyebrows right now going, the last time you said should have, we didn't end up in space. But, um... Yeah, stuff happens. All right, let's go ahead and grab this. Uh, we're going to set for a relatively low altitude here of 100,000 feet. We're going to set my countdown time to five seconds. And I want to make one teeny tiny little adjustment here. Perfect. Okay, let's test it. All right, here we go. We did make sure we got the correct staging, right? Well, we'll find out in a second, won't we? Turn my volume down here so I'll deafen myself. Whee! Oh my, that's uh, that's got some pickup there. Now this is a very, very, very toxic and tremendously explosive, uh, basically propellant that we're using here. So it'd be very interesting to see kind of what that does. Now one of the reasons I went for a liquid option here is just so we have the ability to go ahead and have a little bit more control over both throttling as well as tilting. But we definitely want to be able to gimbal these engines. All right, let's speed time up a little bit. We're just going to kind of arc around here. Climbing pretty good so far. Notice our delta V actually climbs as we start getting progressively more altitude here. Again, because um, we have less air pressure keeping the rocket fuel inside of the motor. I'm not liking the looks of that. That looks like we're tilting a little bit. Oh, no, that's correct. All right, so uh, we're already starting to raise our apogee, which is awesome for apoapsis, I should say. Accelerating, starting to pick up a little bit of speed here. Well, if this works, we're definitely going to have to try to do this with the Gina later on. Looking good, looking good. We're climbing. Everything's smooth. Thrust to weight ratio is coming up uncomfortably. All right, we're just about to do some staging. If I was a little bit more naughty, I'd go ahead and clean it up. All right, calculating delta V for my this. We're going to go ahead and circularize. I think that's a great feature. Basically, we nose over, get a little bit more velocity. Again, because, ooh, ew, ew. Look at how red that is. That can't be healthy. Basically, what the computer is doing is it's automatically circularizing us because we don't have enough juice left in the main stage here. All right, there comes our staging. All right, calculating our apoapsis burn time. It's going to take 62 seconds to go ahead and stabilize our apoapsis. Here comes our little Gemini, uh, the Gust Mobile, flying out here. So now the computer is going to automatically fast forward to our apogee. It's going to go ahead and accelerate. You can still see the rest of our lower stage here. And notice we're using the same technique, but remember this nozzle was perfectly optimized for the stupid high altitude stuff. Let's we'll speed up time a little bit here. Yeah, the rocket's back there somewhere. Sometimes you can just out of the corner of your eye, like see like a little speckle, and they like you. That's how you can tell where the back rocket is. Now, if I was a better person, I'd make it reusable, but ugh, can't do that. You know how it is. All right, we're starting to pick up our altitude a little bit. Let's go ahead and take a look at orbital view real fast. Yeah, we're just about to go into orbit. I think my math was actually 1% accurate today. 
So now it's going to calculate the circularization, which is just going to simplify our orbit a little bit here. I'm going to put my finger right on the accelerator here because there's always the chance that it's going to underburn or overburn. So I'm actually going to go double check this real quickly. Yep, we're just about to the apogee. Speed up a little bit. And it's going to go fire that up. All right, let's go ahead and take a look from the side. All right, and we did it. Yes, success. So uh, not only did we did it, but our upper stage here still has half a tank. So uh, we actually did a really nice job today. Like, I'm actually amazed because I, I don't practice for this. I mean, I've played this game a lot, obviously, but sometimes you get lucky, you know? All right, let's go ahead and complete one orbit, and then we'll do a reentry. All right. Again, we can re-enter at pretty much any point, but my hope was to kind of land not too far off from where all the garbage is that we took off from. So we're just going to kind of loop around here like this. And that looks like a pretty darn good spot to begin our re-entry process. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and separate my stages. Hey, there's the Gusmobile. Vroom, vroom, vroom. Ooh, that's a little touchy. That's exactly what I remember it as, too. I'm going to go ahead and uh, flip us over to facing backwards. Give this thing a little bit of a boost. And the cool thing is I can switch to translate mode and I can actually, actually fly this thing around. See, I'm going to try to get out of the way of the thing that I just released. This is so cool. I can just sort of fly it sideways. Go ahead and cancel it out. Again, when we do some docketing with the Gina later on, this is going to be a full-time job to try to be successful. Let's see. Oh, look at that. They even burst. Oh, that's so cool. Okay, let's go ahead and do our re-entry burn. Hypothetically, I should just give it full throttle and tap the space bar. Whoop, we made a mistake. We have to be facing the opposite direction in order to re-enter. <laughs> oh, look at this. Bye-bye. See ya. Oh man, you almost caught me. You almost caught me. All right, our little arc. Remember, we actually have people on board of this thing today. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my silly little rotation. Unlock. Cancel out translation mode, go like this. Boop. Whoops. That's what I was hoping for. Well, unfortunately for us, I've activated the parachute a little prematurely. So uh, my staging was a little off, but we did get rid of our little retro rockets, which means we now have our handy dandy heat shield kind of chilling on the back there. The fun thing is um, this parachute is going to suddenly get very serious on the way down, and uh, you'll kind of see it the moment it happens. But while we're here, we're still 103 kilometers up. Let's see, um, our current periapsis is, uh, yes, at zero, which means we're going to go splashing down pretty much right not too far off from where we lifted off from. But while we're at it, it'd be kind of fun to EVA, right? <laughs> Uh, Chief, this might not be the best idea to be uh, EVAing when we're trying to re-enter the spacecraft. Oh, it'll be fine. Don't worry. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Whoa. All right. Yeah, probably, probably not a good idea to be doing this. We're not doing our Red Bull jump here. All right. Too far away. All right. Woo. Whoa. Well, that was a terrible idea. Okay, so the controls are exactly backwards to what I expected them to be. Actually, it's really the field of view that's killing me just a little bit. Okay, so that's rotate. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, I have a feeling he's going to be re-entering face first. Oops, excuse me. All right, so this is forward, right? Okay, so that's forward. All right, so that seems to... Okay, so that rotates him this way. Okay, I can work with this. I can work with this. Forward. Set down. Oh, that's back. So what's down here? So if I rotate him like this. Oh, boy. <laughs> He's got a Red Bull this. I hate to say it. <laughs> well, this is what happens when uh, you, you don't want don't, to. Uh, oh, boy. How's our buddy doing here? Problem I'm having for him is... Uh, let me try something real quick. You know, we might as well try to save him if we can. I just need to find what up and down is. Oh, uh, let's see here. Ba, 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 ba. Let's see here. Up and down is E and Q. E and Q. W and S is pitch. All right, whatever. All right, let's go ahead and E and Q. So that's going to rotate him. Cool, I like that. I like that. I can work with that. Let's go ahead and straighten him back out again. Oh, boy, this is not the time to be testing this. All right, so that's backwards. Okay, careful. All right, can we get back in time? No, we're never going to get back in time. So unfortunately, our poor astronaut here is uh, going to be the first guy to re-enter face first here. This is literally so irritating. Uh huh. Um, forward. Oh boy, this is irritating. 
very irritating. It's not quite what, because I want to pitch him down, but he's not pitching down. He's just pitching forward. All right, let's go this way. And, okay, forward. Yeah, I really need him to stick his head down. <laughs> so let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit here. I'll make that my target. Maybe that'll give me a little bit more control here. Yes, it will. Face that. Okay, you, you've got to you gotta rotate, Chief. Hmm. Okay, so you need to... Oh, boy. Shut off my uh, translate mode here. Hmm. Interesting. Hey, guess what I just figured out? You have to hold down the shift key. Okay. Okay. Life's not... We're not dead yet. We're not dead yet. Forward. Okay, easy. Okay, we only need to rotate. To go down is what we need to. Okay, so that's rotation. Ah, now I got it. Okay, nice and easy. Nice and easy. Oh my god, this is not good. He's starting re-entry. Uh, no, 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 no! <laughs> He's gonna get away. Oh, no, did... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was terrible. Well, let me know how reentry goes, because uh, my little astronaut buddy here uh, almost made it. Uh, note to self, uh, find out the controls before you uh, go ahead and launch. Uh, Mr. Astronaut here, sorry. Oh, I didn't know uh, NASA put C4 into their spacesuits. That's uh, not, so not something I was aware of there. So unfortunately, uh, we've had our first uh, real casualty there. Some, you know, sometimes that happens. Sometimes that happens. We had no control. Let's go ahead and grab controls of this one. Yeah, I want to grab this one. Cancel. Uh, let's see here. That looks good to me. We'll take control. Press OK. Apparently, we're already in control. So I'm just going to click it one more time. And we'll go ahead and switch back to this view. And we're totally lost in space. Interesting. Now, uh, where's our handy dandy spacecraft? Uh, I'm not sure which one it is, although I believe it was this one. This one right there. Go ahead and take control. OK. Watch. Hey, there we are. OK. So um, we're going to ignore that little episode with our um, guy who decided to EVA during re-entry. I'll let that be a warning to anybody who attempts to uh, re-enter in that method. It does not work well. Okay, so uh, now we're going to continue with the rest of our little assignment here. Come on, come on down. Good thing we can always undo this flight. Unfortunately, I activated the parachute way too soon. So we missed kind of the fun bit of the re-entry. But, I mean, the capsule itself and the spacecraft work perfectly. Unfortunately, uh, my command of the controls did not. So, um, mm, mm, that's going to be a really, really fun call when I get home. Uh, yeah, so he decided to leave the spacecraft on my instructions, and, um, yeah, he burned up in the atmosphere. But fortunately, everything else worked properly, so don't worry about it too much. Okay, so uh, we're going to go all the way down to Splashdown. We're going to kind of call it here. I think what we'll try next time is uh, try to do the Agena mission. So basically, what we're going to do is we're going to launch something up ahead of the time, fly up there, and try to dock with it, which will be probably an interesting exercise for us because um, I'm not 100% sure that's going to go great. Um, one of my least favorite things of all spacecraft operations is docking because the speeds involved are a little on the high side. That being said, I have succeeded doing it before, so it can't be too hard. Later on, of course, we'll see what we can do with Apollo and all that other good stuff. And realistically, we should have probably done Soyuz. All right, let's go ahead and go curse splash. Sploosh. Oop, right in the thick part of the atmosphere here. Get out! Boink. <laughs> Nice. All right, we did it. All right, folks, uh, hopefully this video was interesting. Uh, these are really, really, really fun videos to make because, you know, yeah, <laughs> at least he can swim, right? All right, these are fun videos to make. And uh, again, I kind of enjoy doing some of this stuff, so I can to keep doing it for at least a little while. Enjoy.